everybody's week going? Huh? Thursday, so lucky for me, I don't have to work on Fridays. A lot of you, probably most of you, will have to work tomorrow, so sorry. But it's the weekend. Woo! Went to my doctor today for my final follow-up appointment, and I got the all clear as far as my thyroid goes, and she said to just keep monitoring the marina, and everything's good, and she basically discharged me, so I'm very happy, so... We'll just, you know, keep monitoring, keep on top of it, that kind of stuff. So that was um, that was pretty much the only thing that I had going on this week that I had weighing on me, you know, because think about these things and you want everything to go okay. Uh, what else happened this week? It was my son's 14th birthday yesterday. Oh, I know. My oldest son is 14. Fully ensconced in teenager years now. Not just, you know, like sort of a teenager when you're 13. Now he's a real teenager. Yep. I know. You don't look like you're old enough to have a 14 year old, you're saying? <laughs> but I am. Uh, okay, so what do I have um, to talk about? I don't really have anything. Oh, okay, so the newest thing and the thing that I'm most excited about is I started a new blog. Um, everybody has been really um, supportive of the cooking videos that I've made. I've made a couple, I think I've made like three cooking videos. So like the, you guys, like my subscribers have been really supportive of that and um, saying really nice things about them. So I was thinking of doing some more um, cooking videos. And then I also had it in the back of my head for about the last six years that I was going to write a cookbook um, using my mother's recipes. Um, <clears throat> many of you, sorry, all of you, who like followed my videos um, for the last little while know that my mother passed away six years ago. What you don't know is she was an amazing cook and not only was she a good cook, but she loved to cook and um, she lived to cook and she lived, she spent most of her time in the kitchen. And so after she died, I was, it really hit me like how her cooking was so influential of everybody around her and everybody who talked about her had um a really great story about her in the kitchen and and you know how like that that's you know like the theme time and time again people talk about how um you know how much they loved her cooking and everything and just i keep this picture in my bathroom so i was looking at it so that's a picture of me and my mom i know she was gorgeous that's what i had to live up to while i was growing up it was very hard um since, especially since I took after my father's side of the family, which is like tall and, you know, stocky, and she's like, mm, a little thin and dainty. Anyway, so the point being, uh, I had all these stories, and I really wanted to write a cookbook of where each recipe had, and I would write the recipe and the story that went along with it, because there are stories attached to all of my favorite recipes that my mom made. So, uh, <laughs> this weekend, I was making my son's birthday dessert which is he doesn't like birthday cake he uh, every year he asks for a birthday chocolate pie and my mother like the recipe comes from my mom and there was a really great story that goes along with it and it hit me as I was making the recipe that I could write a blog because a blog I can handle one recipe at a time so I started a blog called getting stuffed and I'll put the information well in the in in the description box down below and what it is, is it's a collection of stories um, that I, you know, I'm telling about my mom and my mom in the kitchen and the memories that I have around the food and then the recipes that go along with those stories and memories. Right now, there's only three or four recipes on there because I'm taking it like a recipe at a time. But I wanted to launch the blog and just get it going and get it populated. And it will um, it will grow um, weekly, hopefully. So, you know, stop by, have a visit if you like to cook, if you like to eat, if you like to hear old stories. Um, please check that out. I'm very, very happy with it, and um, uh, I'm really excited about it. Okay, so I'm going to just talk about a few um, products. Again, I don't, I've kind of gone away from the idea of doing monthly favorites because I've really curtailed the amount of spending that I do and the amount of shopping that I do for makeup and stuff, so I might not necessarily have, and I also use so many different products like daily that I don't really have you know, monthly. So I kind of like going weekly. So if there's things that have stuck out at me during the week that I either really like or really don't like, I want to share them with you. So um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about in their own video, and I might do that. Um, and that's um, 
vitamin C. So I'm not talking about these products in particular, but I'll show you what I have. I have a moisturizing cream here from a company called Hydromar, and this is a vitamin C cream that is also paraben free. So it just says it's enriched with pure vitamin C, but botanical extracts and dead sea minerals. So it's not really highly concentrated in vitamin C. As a matter of fact, vitamin C is like way down here on the list of ingredients, but and it's not the best moisturizing cream, but I really like how fresh it makes my skin feel. And uh, I also picked up this certified organic, Juice Organics Vitamin C Brightening Facial Serum. And so this is pretty much like pure vitamin C. And what vitamin C does that's really great is it helps your skin produce collagen, which helps, you know, with anti-aging. It also helps I think it's collagen. It also helps um, repair uh, sun damage, like UVA damage. It's just really great, and I, I really find that just all of a sudden my skin feels, because I've been using these products for about, oh, probably two months now, and I just noticed that my skin does feel brighter. Like, all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, I was just like, wow, my skin looks really good, and I think it's the vitamin C. So uh, twice a day I put the serum on, and I'll use the, the uh, moisturizer cream under my eyes and also as a moisturizer underneath my regular moisturizer because I need a lot more. So vitamin C, really good. Helping with like the discoloration and just evening skin tone and brightening skin tone and it helps your skin cells repair and rebuild and it produces collagen as I said. So it's really, it's a really great product. I did some reading on it after I noticed a difference in my skin. And I highly recommend something that has vitamin C in it. Yeah. Speaking of skin, um, I'm use, I love my CeraVe uh, moisturizing lotion, but I was finding that it was a little bit too light as my skin gets really dry in the winter, so I picked up the um, moisturizing cream, which is a little bit heavier. But I picked up the... Rite Aid brand when I was in the state. So this is the moisturizing cream. It's got the same thing, ceramides and hyaluronic acid. I really like this. It's a huge tub and I only paid like $11 for it. So it was a really, really great deal. The only problem that I have with it is there's about, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different parabens in here. So like I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel about parabens, but when there's that many parabens in there. So I'm trying to find some kind of natural product with hyaluronic acid in it or, and you know, peptides, like just something that helps kind of lock in that natural barrier that doesn't have so many parabens in. I mean, it's a shame when products like this work really well, but basically you're putting, you know, toxic goo on your face, so, or your body. But I really, I really do like that. I find it's very moisturizing and it's really good at just holding in that barrier. And I know that the lighting is horrible in the bathroom. It's just, it's worse out there. So for the wrap ups, I thought in the bathroom is okay. And then what else? I rediscovered my dream smooth mousse this week because uh, last week I was having problems with the dry skin. I got the dry skin under control. So I've been able to get back into wearing, um, you know, more like of a regular foundation. So the Dream Smooth Mousse is, is really nice. I'm just really rediscovering it. Um, it gives a nice kind of light coverage, a really nice kind of soft finish to the skin. It's really super nice. And I've been applying that with my um, e.l.f. complexion brush, or powder brush, sorry, or my Sigma F80. And I've actually been, um, for my powder foundation, really loving the e.l.f powder brush over this because this is very dense and so I find it's really good for cream products and um, what do you call it liquid products because it applies those very nicely but this is just a little bit softer and a little bit fluffier a little bit less dense so it's really good for powder and really I just use this a couple of times it's a really super easy eye and it's one of those things that was sitting in my drawer and I, I kind of rediscovered it it's one of my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils, and this one's in Iced Mocha. And it's just a really nice mocha color. It's kind of like a bronzy color. See there? It's really nice. Super easy. And why I wanted to talk to you about this is the fact that 
Um, you can get the same effect with just using like a cream eyeshadow, but why I like the pencil is it's so good for, you know, if you want to do under the eye and, and you know, like kind of line around and then smudge it out. It's really nice precision control for you, so I like that a lot. And I rediscovered, another rediscover is my little Prestige Skin Loving Minerals Sun Baked Mineral Bronzing Powder in Pure Shimmer. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. This is about two years old, and it's it's a lot like the um, MSF thing, you know, baked, yeah, what am I saying, the MSF from Mineral Skin Finish products from MAC. Very pretty. Nice and kind of goldy and peachy highlight color. Ting, ting. Boop. Yeah, but anyway, so right, you can get it at the drugstore. It's really cheap. Saturday. Love it. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about this brush. So this is the Real Techniques by Samantha Chapman Domed Shadow Brush. Um, I love this brush. I've been using it like to apply color and using it like in place of a 217. It's just so nice and soft and dense and just lovely. I think this is one that you buy separately at Ulta. So. It's lovely, and um, the only other thing I'm going to mention is the perfume. I showed you the one perfume that went to the Five Below store, and I bought two perfumes, and they were $5, and they were basically just knockoffs, and the one that I got was called Precious, and it was a knockoff of the um, Vera Wang Princess, and I love it because it's a really nice, soft vanilla scent, and actually lasted really well on my skin and didn't smell all grody like a lot of the designer knockoffs does. <sighs> This one is Pink Blush, and this is very clearly a knockoff of the um, pink from Victoria's Secret, even though it says, it says on the box, not affiliated with Victoria's Secret pink. So this is nice. It's a little bit more florally than I really like in a perfume, so I don't reach for it as much as the other one. It's kind of got like a rose hint going on, but it's nice. It's nice and light. Anyway, you don't care. And that was my week, guys. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Be sure to check out my blog if you like cooking. And I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.